Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 29th March, now it's up past 2, middle of the day by Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my channel in which I share latest updates on the news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. There are quite a few very significant developments and news that I like to share with you for this moment. But before I start, let me once again emphasize how grateful I am for your time, attention and support. It really does mean a lot to me, so thank you very much. Let me say, let's talk about news now, and I will start with Zelensky and his interview that he gave to Associated Press, Associated Press News Agency, and let me translate uh, some points from his interview and read it for you. So, uh, people of Ukraine and the world community will begin to push the authorities to compromise with Russia in the event of the defeat of armed forces of Ukraine in Bakhmut, President Vladimir Zelensky said in, uh, an, in an interview with the Associated Press. And then we have a quote, uh, Our society will feel tired. Our society will push me to compromise with uh, them. Zelensky said, and uh, he also added that any defeat at this stage of the conflict could undermine the morale of the Ukrainian troops uh, uh, basically he is uh, right on these points uh, because uh, as i said many times before uh, defeat in uh, bakhmut will demoralize uh, ukrainian armed forces that's for sure and at the same time questions will be raised in uh, ukrainian society and in uh, uh, western world also because of uh, mainly because of this propaganda that western elites and uh, ukrainian uh, authorities are pushing according to which they are basically winning this fight and which is not true and uh, once russian side will establish full control over the bakhmut uh, of course questions will rise i guess uh, western society will start demanding answers also uh, because it's uh, their money that was sent to most corrupt regime in uh, Europe and we are not talking about one or two dollars we are talking about uh, more than 100 billion dollars combined to Europeans we are talking about some few hundred billions at this stage probably and uh, of course uh, citizens of US and citizens of uh, European states do have all the rights to demand answers why the elites uh, acting this crazy and why they are spending hundreds of billions for uh, Zelensky's Nazi regime what is the uh, interest of western society in all of this because there is no interest of western society in this is not it let's continue now and this is Ria Novosti news agency also and we have statement from Vladimir Rogov, official of Zaporozhye region, and uh, according to him, um, Zelensky's regime is uh, working on a uh, few scenarios of uh, upcoming and uh, anticipating by anticipated by many large-scale counteroffensive uh, of Zelensky's regime in direction of in direction of uh, this land bridge between Crimea and main and uh, Russia. Uh, and uh, according to Rogov, Zelensky's regime will try to conduct marine operation, amphibious operation in direction of Energodar, which is here, and uh, Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. At the same time, they will uh, start offensive uh, from Zaporozhye region, which means that uh, from Orekhovo direction will be. Uh, Contraoffensive conducted. I will add to this that uh, Zelensky's regime most definitely will try to uh, take uh, establish control over the this dam here in uh, Novaya Kachovka to move from uh, right bank of the Dnieper military equipment, heavy military equipment, in mass on the left bank, and probably we will also see some uh, amphibious operations in the delta area of the. The Nepal River in Kherson uh, region. 
it's just uh, obvious you don't have to be military expert to do understand uh, uh, all of this it's it's, it's just uh, basic logic really mm. i do hope that uh, russian side is ready to repeal any contra offensive of Zelensky's regime as you know i did share yesterday information and update that uh, this direction uh, do have a new commander and uh, probably he will uh, make sure that the Russian side is ready. Ready not just to repeal counteroffensive of Ukrainian side, but also to conduct offensive uh, operations. Let's continue now, and this is still Rogov's statement. Uh, this morning, uh, 5.30, early morning, Zelensky's regime did conduct yet another strike on Melitopol. And according to Rogov, uh, uh, Ukrainian side did use uh, high Mars multi-launch rocket systems again and uh, they did target uh, uh, civilian civilian infrastructure in Melitopol that's what uh, Rogov is saying of course you can take this information with pinch of salt but we just saw uh, two days ago how Ukrainian uh, forces did a strike on Melitopol's university when university was full of students and I did share a video of that strike with you, and you see with your own eyes, students were running away in panic, and it was uh, some horrifying scene, really. By miracle, no one died, but yet again, it just shows you what kind of uh, elements those, uh, those criminals are that run in Ukraine and making decisions. Let's continue. This is TAS News Agency. Again, and we have uh, information uh, about uh, Kupiansk direction, according to which uh, Zapad grouping of uh, Russian forces, Zapad is uh, west, so western grouping of Russian forces did destroy four, uh, uh, four sabotage groups of uh, Zelensky's uh, regime in Kupiansk direction. And let me show you all this on the map, man. So, this is Kupiansk direction. Where is the Kupiansk? This is Kupiansk, by the way, and uh, as you can see, Oskov River divides uh, this town in two. And uh, I did report uh, quite some time, time ago now that uh, forward units of Russian armed forces did establish partial control on the uh, on the left side of uh, Kupiansk left side of this uh, river on the left bank and uh, as you can see quite heavy artillery duels uh, are conducted in this uh, area during the previous 24 hours and also uh, clashes direct clashes between the between the forces so i believe russian side is trying to push uh, zelensky's uh, forces uh, to the to the west and same time we do have, have a quite a big massive activization of russian artillery in direction of seversk Russian side still trying to establish control over this gray area in uh, area of uh, Belagorovka but uh, yet again as I said many times before Seversk will become uh, Seversk is a hot point right now of course but after situation with Bakhmut will resolve then uh, Russian forces probably will try to encircle uh, fully encircled server score at least establish operational encirclement uh, over the that town when it comes to Bakhmut direction if you remember yesterday I did said that uh, I was expecting that before end of the day uh, forward units of PMC Wagner will, will uh, enter Central Park part of the city and uh, late afternoon I did see video yesterday from Ukrainians, uh, this video was uh, made by Ukrainian soldiers, and uh, uh, in that video, you clearly can see administrational building of the of the Bakhmut, 
and the video was shot not far away from that building let's say in 100 meters from that building and that probably we can probably interpret that video uh, as a as a fact that uh, forward units of PMC Wagner are now fighting to establish control over the central city center of Bakhmut and after this will be done only west part of Bakhmut will be under control of Zelensky's regime and uh, yet again because of uh, heavy concentration of uh, Ukrainian armed forces in this uh, city it will definitely take for PMC Wagner units some time to neutralize uh, so many thousands of uh, soldiers so I don't expect that this operation will end uh, today or tomorrow or in this week but uh, you know it's a um, matter of time in, in before end of next week we may see that Bakhmut is under full Russian control yet again uh, according to some uh, sources uh, in Bakhmut now are trapped up to from five to ten thousand Ukrainian soldiers so even if all of them will decide to surrender it will take at least uh, I don't know two three four days to you know disarm all of them and to take them to uh, POW camps in organized manner but because uh, PMC Wagner units have to fight with uh, with those uh, soldiers Ukrainian soldiers of course it will take uh, much more time even if uh, Wagnerites are much more capable and much more professional especially when it comes to urban fight it will still take uh, quite time to deal with this uh, issue but uh, fate of Bakhmut is uh, is uh, you know it's it's obvious now Bakhmut will be under Russian control and uh, I believe Chisovyar will fall under Russian control full Russian control uh, fairly soon after that fairly soon after that uh, also of course uh, heavy fighting is going on in Donetsk, Donetsk direction especially in Avdeevk I did share many videos on my telegram channel about bombardments of Ukrainian positions by Russian artillery and uh, aviation some heavy clashes here uh, some heavy clashes and uh, yet again um, it's quite possible that Avdeevka will uh, become a mini Bakhmut for Ukrainian armed forces uh, when they will be uh, sent to this direction unit after unit and uh, Russian forces will just uh, deal with them uh, one by one so it's a trap it's a trap it's obvious uh, but it seems like Zelensky's regime don't really cares all they want is to win some time for the Western masters because Biden administration don't want to hear any bad news from uh, Ukraine and same we can say probably about London about UK's uh, leadership they don't want to hear any bad news because then questions will rise from uh, US citizens and from UK citizens it's inevitable of course but uh, they want to delay moment when they have to find some excuses uh, for their actions and they, they're just trying to delay that that moment let's continue now let's continue and um, and we have statement from Piskov uh, this is TAS news agencies report we have a statement from press spokesman uh, of the Russian president um, and uh, Dmitry Piskov said that the main goal, main goal for a special military operation is to secure Russian citizens and secure Russia in general. I cannot remember this is uh, you know, how many times this uh, explanation was given about uh, special military operation, what is goal, uh, what Russia wants to achieve and uh, how many times it was uh, changed or sounded differently but uh, overall overall yes I mean you can say that yes in general of course the main goal is to secure 
secure Russian citizens and secure uh, Russian Federation. But it will be nice if it be nice if uh, Russian officials will uh, will uh, say exactly the same when it comes to this topic because this different they are addressing this issue differently all the time and it, it does makes people confused because sometimes main goal is to secure Donbass sometimes its main goal is to secure new territories of Russian Federation new regions uh, and sometimes uh, some other explanation has been given when uh, they can be find some universal explanation and uh, they can say always that yes main goal is to secure Russian citizens and Russian Federation that's it as there is no need for further explanations then and in this case yes Piskov said uh, exactly that so let's continue now and uh, this is Ryan Novosti's report which is also important uh, Russian ambassador in US Oh, no, no, this is a uh, deputy, as I understand, of, uh, yes, this is deputy of uh, head of Russian foreign ministry, Sergei Rabkov. He said that, uh, I mean, Russian side hopes that NATO will adequately receive uh, information about uh, deployment of Russian tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus. And... Um, I guess what he means by that is that uh, Moscow is uh, directly and indirectly warning NATO to not make any crazy moves when it comes to Belarus, when it comes to Kaliningrad region, and uh, when it comes to Ukraine also. So that's uh, Kaliningrad region, by the way, that's uh, Belarus. Yeah, and uh, of course, I mean, because we have uh, some new subscribers, I have to time to time repeat myself. But previously, I did said uh, say many, uh, I did said many times that in in theory, it's quite possible that this uh, new anti-Russian coalition that Washington, London, and Warsaw are trying to build on base of some NATO member states. And not just NATO member states, because Moldova, for example, probably will be one way or another part of this anti-Russian coalition. Uh, if current government in Moldova will hold uh, its position, and Moldova is not NATO member, and Moldova is a neutral state by constitution, even though the government of Moldova don't really cares about it. So, uh, what I want to say is that you know I did say many times before that. Uh, this, uh, uh, my guess is that, uh, or my prediction is that once uh, Washington, London, and uh, uh, Warsaw will finish uh, building this new anti Russian coalition, they will introduce NATO forces to this conflict openly under the umbrella of uh, this new anti Russian coalition so that. Formally, NATO will stay outside of this conflict, and uh, we all should understand, in that case, this fifth article of NATO will not work. So once, uh, and uh, I was thinking that maybe uh, Washington, London, and Warsaw will go as far as uh, attacking Kaliningrad region and Belarus region same time introducing its forces in the in the battlefield in Ukraine and this decision of Moscow to deploy new tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus in my understanding is a preventive measure to make sure that uh, Poland will don't make Poland or Baltic states and they will definitely be part of anti-Russian coalition they will not make any crazy moves in the direction of Belarus on, or, or Kaliningrad and here this statement from uh, Rebkov once again in diplomatic terms explaining for the Western elites that Russia hopes that NATO will realize seriousness of this deployment of nu tactical nuclear weapons in uh, Belarus and that they will not conduct any crazy moves. 
I'm not sure that Western elites do are, are capable to, you know, conduct themselves seriously like grown-ups. But at least Russian side, I mean, trying, trying to, you know, warn them and explain to them what may happen if they will act crazy. And uh, yes, the rest of it is uh, up to future. Let's see what future holds. In regards of uh, relationships between Russia and the uh, West. So at this point, at this point, let me use a couple of minutes and uh, a little bit promote my own channel. Uh, dear friends, if you think that this channel is uh, interesting, useful, has some potential and uh, deserves to exist in this field of news and political commentary, Please consider to support with small donations through PayPal or by subscribing to my Patreon channel, Patreon page. You will see links under this video in the description box and of course I will be very grateful for this. We did manage to survive as a project. We did manage to survive this month and now it's time to try and survive next month, April. So let's see how it will those you know but i'm very grateful for your time attention support for everything that you do uh, for me and uh, this channel to keep uh, continuing this work let's continue with the news now and uh, this is also very serious uh, information let me uh, translate it for you it's not just serious, but it's uh, dangerous, extremely dangerous in my opinion. How long is this video? Already 21 minutes. Okay. So according to um, Secretary of the Security Council of uh, Russian Federation, Nik Nikolai Patrushev, uh, there is uh, irrefutable evidence of U.S. biological activity in Ukraine. And we have quote here, there is irrefutable evidence of large-scale biological activities carried out by Washington on the territory of Ukraine, as well as the involvement of uh, U.S. elites in, uh, in this uh, process. Patrushev said Wednesday at the meeting of the secretaries of the Security Council of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization member states, so basically, Patrushev did share information that Russia has about U.S. activity, U.S. biolab activities uh, on uh, Ukrainian territory. This is very significant, uh, very significant topic, especially because we just went through this pandemic, and the entire world, entire world was uh, you know, shut down and uh, damaged and. Uh, Basically, many officials in many countries now are op openly saying that that pandemic was a uh, result of uh, man-made uh, virus. I'm not an uh, expert in this field, but when uh, some uh, top uh, specialists are saying this kind of stuff, you know, probably they have some reasons to say so. Uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, it's uh, of course dangerous that uh, U.S. is conducting some experiments with uh, with uh, hazardous materials in uh, labs all around the world, and we have some more information here, so you can judge by yourself how dangerous all this stuff is. So the secure secretary of the Security Council of the Russian Federation pointed out that in the regions of Ternipol, Odessa, Kharkov, Nikolaev, infectious outbreaks were noted in the immediate, immediate vicinity, vicinity of uh, institutes where pathogens were studied. And among them uh, was uh, hemorrhagic uh, fever, cholera, swine flu, Hepatitis A and botulism. So this is all. All this stuff is quite scary, isn't it? All this stuff is quite scary, and uh, 
not just Russia, but uh, all all the countries in this world have all, every right to demand from U.S. to stop these uh, illegal criminal activities because it's dangerous for the entire world, for God's sake. I don't know what intent is for U.S. elites, what they want to achieve, but uh, U.S. laboratories are just everywhere, not just in Ukraine. In Georgia, for example, there is laboratory, and uh, I do know from my relatives that circulate uh, some uh, information is circulating in Georgia that uh, people becoming sick, in increasingly in, uh, becoming sick in, in Georgia since this laboratory was uh, introduced, since this U.S. laboratory, military laboratory was introduced in, in, in close vicinity to Tbilisi, capital of Georgia. As I said, I'm not expert, I cannot judge uh, on this matter, but uh, it, uh, this information does curse people, you know, and probably it is dangerous, probably it is dangerous. Let's continue now. This is Ria Novosti's uh, report uh, based on information from Russian Defense Ministry, according to which Russian air defense systems first time did shut down in previous day. Uh, U.S. made GLSDB uh, long-range ammunition uh, that was launched uh, by HIMARS multi-launcher rocket system. And uh, yes, U.S. did promise to Zelensky's regime that they will deliver this uh, ammunition that can be uh, that has a 150 kilometer radius range and uh, they did deliver and i believe uh, in in coming days zelensky's regime will probably start using this ammunition to strike uh, russian territory and to maximize damage that they can do towards civilians especially civilians because they cannot deal with russian armed forces and that's why they are targeting civilians, those cowards, man. Those cowards, those sick Nazi animals. You know, one day they will all pay. They will all pay price for the crimes. But uh, for now, unfortunately, they are you know, ruining lives of, of thousands and thousands of people. Those, those criminal Nazi animals. Let's continue. Uh, with news. This is Ria Novosti's report about statement that was made uh, in Pentagon ac according to which uh, delivery of uh, US drones, US strike drones, MQ-9 Reaper to Zelensky's regime will uh, not really change anything and Pentagon thinks this is uh, uh, this is uh, not going to happen because these drones will be unable to uh, conduct uh, operations in area where Russian air defense systems are very strong. And no, basically that's that's true. You cannot argue with this. Not these drones. Not uh, Western uh, jet fighters will uh, operate freely in uh, in the front line in area that ra Russian air defense systems are active. Best ones in the world, after all. Let's continue now, still Ria Novosti's report that head of uh, IAEA, International Atomic Energy, they arrived in uh, Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. Um, Rafael Grossi is in uh, Energodar right now. What can I say? Uh, I don't trust IAEA. I think this uh, organization is a tool of uh, Western elites, like many other organizations. That West uh, West created or West uh, has uh, established full control over, and of course I don't trust this uh, person, uh, Rafael Grossi. I'm quite sure he will he is acting under orders of uh, Western elites, and he will try to push Russian side to withdraw uh, its security forces from Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, and he will probably try at least to push Russian side out of Energodar and Zaporozhye 
and the idea that he will come up will be that you know the Apology nuclear power plant should be under control of some uh, let's say IAEA experts or some uh, other neutral player if we can call neutral IAEA for example but uh, this is trap of course this is trap and I hope Moscow will uh, never agree in this kind of uh, deal because it's obvious that if Russian security forces will leave Energodar and Zaporozhye nuclear power plant in 24 hours Zelensky's regime and their criminals will uh, enter this city and this uh, plant and establish control over it, over it. So these this ones, these criminals cannot be trusted, man. This one, Rafael Gross, is a, is a criminal. This is an unworthy criminal that are working under orders of Western elites. So uh, he should never be allowed to visit any place under Russian control. Who the hell is he, man? Just nothing. Zero. Puppet of, uh, dog puppet of uh, Western elites. Let's continue now, and this is RBK News Agency. And uh, by the way, it's becoming increasingly difficult to talk about Western elites and their puppets in a uh, respectful manner. It's just uh, too hard, man. Those criminals cannot be respected. Let's be clear about it. I mean, those criminals cannot be respected. They are danger to entire human species. I mean, they are danger to human civilization. How are we going to ex expect those those criminals, man? It's impossible. Let's continue now, and we have information from RBK News Agency, according to which Zelensky is now demanding also, almost, uh, from Xi Jinping, Chinese leader, to visit, uh, visit Ukraine. Uh, this is crazy, of course. Uh, but uh, that's how out of touch Zelensky really is. Maybe he truly thinks that uh, he, he become uh, someone important. But uh, he should see some psych psychiatrists, man. Because, you know, he definitely needs one. <laughs> He's just a fucking dog, man. Dog puppet of Washington and uh, London. Who the hell is he, though? Let's continue, and this is also RBK news. Uh, and by the way, of course, Chinese leader will uh, just <laughs> don't even uh, spend a minute on Zelensky. May I don't think he will even call because what is point to talk to Zelensky? He is a puppet, isn't it? I mean, we all know it. So instead of uh, calling to Kiev. Uh, of course, it's, uh, it's it's better to for Xi Jinping, for example, to call in Washington and London and talk to uh, bosses of Zelensky uh, because decisions are made uh, in on behalf of uh, Ukraine. Decisions uh, are made in in Washington and uh, London, and that's the case for long now. So it is what it is, man. This is RBK News Agency's report. Uh, yesterday, um, some uh, terrorists tried to attack uh, police uh, station in uh, Budermes city in Chechen Republic. And we have information from uh, head of uh, Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov. According to this, this information, all the terrorists were uh, killed during the gunfight and situation under full control but what is interesting is that a uh, uh, few days before that uh, some terrorists did attack uh, police uh, checkpoint on uh, administration uh, border between Ingushetia and uh, North Ossetia Alania republics and it seems like uh, information that was uh, uh, openly reported by Russian foreign intelligence about U.S. attempt to train and uh, send to Russia and neighboring countries some terrorists. Uh, this information may may become reality. Maybe we are seeing now exactly that activization of terrorist groups that uh, are under full control of uh, CIA and MI6. 
US and British uh, secret services. So I hope uh, Russian FSB will, will deal with this uh, threat and uh, all those uh, terrorists will be exterminated and uh, it will be even better if uh, Russian side will uh, exterminate all those uh, assets, all those uh, CIA and MI6 representatives that were training those terrorists because they should they are legitimate target and they should be neutralized for sure let's continue now this is ria novosti's report uh, about uh, this is very very significant also let me translate this uh, for you how long is this video 35 minutes okay few more few more news and uh, so Kiev not, not the, notified uh, the uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church about the termination of the lease agreement for the Kiev Pichorska Laura. So basically what is happening is that... Uh, where was that? So basically what is happening is that uh, today, according to some news, Zelensky's regime will try to establish full control over the Kiev Pichorska Lava, that's a monast monastery in the Kiev. This monastery is a part of uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and Ukrainian Orthodox Church is a, uh, a part of uh, Russian Orthodox Church. So this is our... I'm not specialist in religion, just matters, but this is a sister churches if, if that's a right explanation so ukrainian orthodox church definitely is uh, closely related to uh, russian orthodox church like all orthodox churches are closely related it's, it's that's how it is but as you know uh, since 2014 state department of us and us secret services began to create in ukraine some uh, sect and the name of uh, Orthodox uh, Christianity and that sect has uh, received uh, support from uh, Kyiv regime and they are now uh, burning down churches and uh, oppressing Orthodox Christians of uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church and uh, they are trying now to take basically everything from uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church and uh, today they will attempt, they will try to uh, take even Kiev Pichorska Laura, which is absolutely, absolute madness. This is, in religious terms, this is an uh, unforgivable sin what they are doing. And we may see in Ukraine uh, some elements of civil war if, if this will continue because for uh, religious people, this is very serious matter. I'm Orthodox Christian. I'm a part of Georgian Orthodox Church. But I'm not very religious. Uh, but uh, I do know very religious uh, people. And for them, this kind of uh, uh, situations are very, very uh, painful. And that's why I'm saying that we may see in Ukraine uh, division now inside the society between uh, uh, Orthodox Christians and uh, those sectants that are, you know, part of this uh, sect that was created by CIA and the uh, State Department of U.S. So some serious stuff is happening, very serious stuff is happening, and uh, I will you know try to learn more about situation and of course i will share information in next uh, updates let's continue now this is real Novosti's report that um, air forces u.s air force did conduct um, uh, test uh, launch of hypersonic missile and uh, distant test launch which has take place on uh, uh, 13th of march this uh, test launch was unsuccessful and uh, I cannot feel sorry for <laughs> for US Air Force to be honest. It's, it's good that they don't really have a, 
hypersonic missiles because even without it, Biden White Biden administration is acting like uh, crazy. If they have now, you know, hypersonic, hypersonic missiles in their disposal, who knows what they will do? I mean, it's just these this, this neoliberal fascists are too dangerous, man. And it's obvious that it's not Biden that makes any decision. I mean, what we are talking about. It's some people in shadow that are making decisions and, uh, you know, less uh, weapons and less opportunities they will have better for the entire world because they are crazy as hell, man. Let's continue now. This is RT's report. How many news are left? Uh, okay, let, only a few, so I will mm, try to share this news as fast as possible. So this is quite interesting uh, because some polls were conducted in US. It's a Wall Street Journal survey, uh, basically, and according to this uh, survey, some traditional values uh, for uh, traditional for US citizens have been fallen in uh, in. Uh, popularity in recent decades and we have some numbers here so uh, for example Americans US citizens who say that uh, patriotism is very important to them has fallen to 38 percent down from uh, 61 percent in 2019 and 70 percent from 1998 can you imagine this number man in 1998, patriotism was a thing for 70% uh, uh, of US citizens. Now, only 38% thinks uh, patriotism is a serious matter. Uh, let's see another point, man. Religion, for example, has uh, fallen in importance with 39% listing it uh, as a very important, down from 48% in 2019 and uh, 62 percent from 1998 yet again just unbelievable unbelievable number numbers uh, just 30 percent of americans now consider having the children very important down from 43 percent in 19 and 59 percent in uh, 1998 uh, in um, 1998, 47% ranked community involvement as very important, a figure that uh, rose to 62% in uh, 2019 before failing to 27% in 2023. So it seems like this propaganda of neoliberals, uh, this, this propaganda of neoliberal fascists are truly working and uh, especially when it comes to new generations and uh, these numbers basically are a result of, of this uh, propaganda because in US and in West in general generations have been uh, uh, rise that have no uh, true values really they just have no even family is not a value for them for many of them unfortunately and uh, if family is not not uh, nothing for them then uh, of course nothing will be so it's a sad picture really it's a sad picture and it's a wake up call it should be wake up call for uh, for uh, us citizens i mean us citizens that still you know uh, still uh, trying to deal somehow with this uh, incre incredible level of degradation of uh, society in, in, in the US. How else you gonna call it, man? Uh, people don't respect family. Uh, it's just I impossible. And family traditions, how? Why? What, what is wrong with you, for God's sake? But that's, that's what uh, this uh, globalist wants, man. That's what they want and they are pushing the crazy propaganda and the young generations are failing for it. You know, in increased rate. Let's continue now, let's continue. And uh, by the way, that's that's one of the reasons why I think that Russia has a unique opportunity to become a stronghold uh, for uh, 
and uh, one of the main direction of uh, emigration from the western states is that here in Russia family values, traditional values are untouchable and Russia truly can become a main stronghold of, of, the, of the western society because after all Russia also part of West, western world if we are talking about in, 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 in that regard And Russia is a last stronghold, really. Hungary, of course, uh, trying to do its best. Few other states, maybe, but when it comes to you know uh, true force, then you know Russia is uh, basically main stronghold. And I believe in coming years, Russia may become. Uh, very popular destination for for uh, Western immigrants, and probably thousands and tens of thousands will emigrate to Russia because uh, exactly this, because uh, so f f because the traditional values, the family values, are failing in in the Western society. Let's continue. This is Ria Novosti's report. Uh, about demonstrations in uh, in France, also very important topic because if initially many of us probably were thinking, you know, what there will be demonstration or two, and then uh, uh, society will come down, it seems like no people are very angry, very angry, especially because uh, elites are not listening. And when it comes to France, uh, French people do know how to deal with the uh, so-called elites that are not listening to uh, society. They have rich history uh, in that regard and uh, Macron and the uh, rest of them that, uh, you know, I don't know what they think about themselves, but that they should listen to French people before it's not too late. This situation may end up in, in, uh, in, in collapse of current system of uh, ruling in, in, in France quite possibly so if that's the case then we will see more and more escalation in France and people of France will uh, will not stop uh, let's continue how long is this video 47 minutes for God's sake man and we you know probably you will agree all these news are quite interesting isn't it I mean I did uh, pull out a few couple of news because uh, I was thinking this this uh, video will be long enough uh, but or too long but these news are interesting for example Societe Generale Societe Generale that's a French uh, French um, bank banking institution I mean uh, world uh, famous bank uh, has some uh, problems now and not just uh, Societe General but also uh, BNP Paribas and HSBC because these banks have been accused of money laundering uh, of participation in money laundering scheme and tax evasion scheme and basically these banks were uh, helping some oligarchs from uh, all around the world to avoid taxes and they were doing this for uh, some benefits, of course, some money. And um, this this does shows you, I mean, these kind of uh, stories, together with the uh, collapse of some uh, banks like uh, uh, Credit Suisse, for example. Uh, that shows you that the European banking system is uh, falling apart, uh, step by step, little by little, but... Uh, they are so corrupt. They are so out of touch with the uh, with the uh, with the true rules of the uh, business and how they should conduct themselves uh, professionally. That uh, probably at some point in in uh, near future we will see some huge banking crisis in in the Europe. 
but yet again I'm not expert in finances but that's my that, that's my guess because uh, too many news about uh, issues with with Western uh, banking system just too many news and that's what we know and what is uh, still uh, unknown to us if you combine all that stuff it's a recipe for disaster and that's exactly the direction that Western banking system is uh, heading Let's continue. This is Ria Novosti's uh, article about uh, forecast on Russian ruble for April. And according to analytic of uh, Socom Bank, Mikhail Vasilev, in April, Russian uh, ruble may uh, exchange rate of Russian ruble in comparison with dollar may be from 74 to 79 rubles for one uh, US dollar which is uh, which is okay which is okay if if uh, if ruble will stay in these parameters it's it's okay but uh, uh, as you know i you know i did predicted that uh, before end of this year we may see not just 80 or 90 maybe even 100 the rubles for a dollar because uh, in my opinion russian central bank and uh, finance ministry is uh, interfering artificially influencing exchange rates and uh, they are making Russian ruble weaker which is good for a business especially big business and which is good for uh, 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 fooling to fill budget federal budget but uh, I'm not sure this is uh, good for uh, ordinary citizens because Weaker ruble will become uh, higher will be inflation, and uh, yeah, but still because uh, because Nabiulina is definitely one of the best uh, heads of central banks in the world, and Russian this economical bloc, I mean, love them or hate them, they are doing some something right because Russian economy is holding despite this uh, unbelievable, unimaginable pressure from the. Western elites and Western sanctions, and uh, it's hard to criticize them. So this is it for today's update. I hope you will find the uh, news that I provide interesting and uh, this video also. And if so, please consider to uh, hit that like button. Leave some commentary about any topic you like. And uh, if you can, please share links to my videos or my channel with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Telegram or any other platform that you are active on. That will greatly increase my chances to reach wider audience and uh, of course I will be very grateful for this help. And if you can and if you want to, uh, you also can support my channel by PayPal uh, with small donation or by subscribing to my Patreon channel. You will see links under this video in the description box this is it for now unfortunately i could not manage to uh, upload video earlier uh, even in with this video i did have some technical uh, trouble but uh, fortunately i will manage to upload this this one and uh, yes this is it this is it for now, there are many interesting news that I could not talk about, I could not share because uh, videos are too long and uh, that's why Telegram channel is useful, really. You can, uh, you can watch uh, and read the uh, news during the day, new updates on the, on the Telegram. So yes, this is it for now. Have a nice day, take care and uh, see you soon.